out of Psalms 51. Brother Nick read the first eight verses. We're going to read verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Is there anything more wonderful, more lovely than to ask God, God, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me? Can somebody say, hey, I need that. I need that right spirit inside me. Renew that right spirit inside me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. That's another sermon. But look at the last, uh, verse 12. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Restore. That means to bring it back. That means you used to have it. How many remember a time when you was just bubbling with the joy, the oil of gladness, the joy of the Lord? Oh, yeah. When you first got saved, you remember how excited you were? Well, it's a reproach unto the Lord when the houses of worship, when Christians walk around like the rest of the world, uh, doom, despair, and agony on me, deep, dark depressions, excessive misery. No, no, no. That's the world story. Our story is, oh, if God before me, who can be against me? Hey, God's word says I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Amen. Nothing is impossible. With man, some things are impossible. Oh, how many know, but with God, nothing is impossible. All things are possible. If you are facing an impossible situation, in other words, maybe you tried everything you know how, and it didn't work. Maybe other people tried to help you. Or maybe you've been trying for years. And you just don't have a breakthrough. I want you to understand today that God can get you right where you need to be. Amen. God could do that. He just needs uh, uh, some cooperation from you and me. Amen. Restoration means to call back. To return back. You know, when you were so full of joy when you first got saved, we want to return back to that. We want to call that back. If you're not as happy today as you were when you got saved, you buckle your seatbelt because I'm going to tell the truth. <laughs> you backslid a bit. You backslid a bit. If you're not excited about the, your salvation, you're not joyful about what God has done in your life, you backslid a little bit. I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm saying you backslid. There's a remnant, and there's always a remnant. That Jesus is coming back for. There's not many people ready to meet the Lord. I'll go to the conclusion of this sermon. There's not a whole lot of people that are ready to meet the Lord. And I'm talking right now of church people. Can I preach a little bit this morning? It doesn't matter if you go to church. That's not going to get you to heaven. You can't go to heaven because grandma and grandpa were, were deacons and, and big, big pillars in the church. You can't ride anybody's coattail. Husband, you can't go to heaven just because your wife is a holy woman of God and vice versa. You have to work out your own salvation. You do. You and God. You and God have to work it all out. Come out. Uh, and, and when you do shout it with a great shout, when they praise the Lord because, why? Why did they shout? Because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. They got excited. You see, uh, the Romans destroyed the temple in 70 A.D. And they're restoring the temple. And the Bible says that the temple will be restored when the Lord returns in the second coming. He's coming back for a restored temple. Now, I'm not talking about right now the temple where the Holy of Holies and, and the court, the Gentiles and all that. I'm talking about you. 
You are the temple of the Lord. Amen. You are. You are the temple of the Lord. And the spirit of God dwells inside you. The spirit of the Lord. You are the holy of holies. You are that holy place that God dwells in. Amen. You are the temple of the Lord. And he's coming back. Amen. He's coming back for a, a holy church. He's coming back for a restored temple. Mm. That means we need to restore our temple. That means we need to get our joy back in. I don't know why people aren't happy. I understand if you don't know Jesus, why you're so gloomy, why you're so discouraged, why are you so full of fear because everything's crashing? Oh, the economy's tanking. Oh, there's sickness and disease everywhere. Oh, the schools are closed down. Oh, what are we going to do? Oh, the government just taking over and telling people what to do and stay home and go away. And What's going to happen? If you're a child of God, you're not going to worry about all that stuff. You know that God's got the whole wide world in his hand. Amen. Amen. Let's just trust God during all this stuff. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. Let me get giddy. It was a Jew that was wounded. Here comes a Samaritan. The Samaritan and the Jews hated each other. The Samaritans despised the Jews. The Jews said uh, the, the Samaritans were just like animals. Y'all remember, maybe you don't, some of y'all so young, I, I got socks and underwear older than some of you. Uh, back in the 60s, during the race riots, remember how blacks and whites, they just hated each other. You remember that? And it's, it's kind of getting that way. We got to stop it. We got to stop all this racial stuff. We got to start loving people, loving each other, and not looking at the color, but uh, do like God does, look at the content of the heart. Amen. Amen. The word of God says God ponders the heart. God looks at the heart. So we need to, if we're like, if we're Christian, that's child of Christ-like, we need to be looking at the hearts of people and not the color of their skin or the texture of their hair or where they come from. They, we are all people that are created by God. And I'll, I'll just make this clarification. We're not all children of God. We're not all children of God. We are all created by God, but you, you're not a child of God until you get adopted into his family. And the way you get adopted into his family is if you are born again. Whoosh, child of God. So no, when somebody says, well, we're all children of God. No, we're not. You got to confess Jesus Christ. He, he was crucified. He's buried. And he rose from the dead on the third day. And he sits on the right hand of the Father. You got to say that. You got to believe that. And you got to walk that. You got to live that to be a child of God. Jericho Road is like many of us. I said in the first part of this sermon life is hard, it's full of heartaches and it's full of pain. It's not a cakewalk. I'm not one of these preachers that, you know, says we just need to tiptoe through the tulips and catch little butterflies. And, and No, life is tough. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to get out of bed in the morning. And life is painful because people you love hurt you. People you love People you love will hurt you the most because you love them. All right, they, that, that cuts deeper than someone you don't know. I'm talking about friends and family that dishonor you, discredit you, gossip about you, spread lies about you, betray you. That hurts. But we're on our own Jericho Road. How many times have we passed by the Jericho Road of 2020 and saw somebody on the side of the road needing help and us religious Christian children of God he 
keep on walking. Where's our compassion? Obey the Lord. Galatians 6, 1, brethren, we're talking about restoration, right? Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, what? Restore. Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. What does that mean? That means this, that we are not all perfect. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. Nobody ever was perfect except Jesus Christ. So whenever somebody in the church, somebody, not necessarily in the church, but let's take the church if someone falls, sins, blows it, you, you got the picture, falls flat on their face, do something really stupid and dumb, the world would talk about them and cut them down and criticize them and gossip about them but the church should restore, restore him back. We got to praise the Lord on the mountain and praise the Lord down in the valleys. Praise God in the good times and praise him in the bad times. You see, our situations and circumstances change, but God does not change. Amen. Malachi 3, 3 uh, 10, 11, I think it says, I am God, I change not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he ever was a forgiving God, he still is. If he was ever a God full of mercy that endureth forever, he still is full of mercy that endures forever. Amen. If he ever was the Alpha and the Omega, he still is the Alpha and the Omega. If he was ever the author and the finisher of my faith, he still is. If he ever was the healer of oh, the great Rapha, he is still the healer of my body. If he was ever a God that restored, oh, he's still my restoring God. He is still my delivering God because he used to be a deliverer and he still is. Yeah, I will sing. Yeah, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Stand with me, you joyful saints of God. Bring a sacrifice. I was talking to Doris on the phone. And sometimes, as a pastor, you don't know what to say. And Doris, Doris just told me I, I just messed up my knee that I just had surgery on, and I'm going to have to read to it. And for a, a few seconds, I was without words. So I said, Let's just pray. And I began to pray. And you see, it's times like that when the Holy Ghost just puts words in your mouth. I'm not bringing any attention to me or myself, but only to him. When you don't know what to do or say, trust him. Trust him. Amen. And I prayed something like, We all have our troubles. And we things happen in our life, and I'm speaking the same thing to you today. Things happen in our life that gets us down and discouraged and all beaten up. Like that person on the side of the road, the Jericho Road, all beaten up and worn out. But God is a restorer. And I said, I thank God that Doris doesn't live in some third world jungle country where there's no doctors, where she would be laid up with a twisted knee and no help and full of pain. I thank you, God, that you blessed her. I thank you, God, that she's born in the United States of America and not some other country because she doesn't have the money to, to, to pay for the medical services she needs, but she lives in a country that will take care of her. So we, we rejoice, Lord. We rejoice. And I thank you, Lord, that this body that we live in is just temporary. Amen. Oh, but the, the soul never dies. 
Amen. And I thank the Lord that Doris is ready to meet you at any time. We have reasons to rejoice on the mountain and reasons to rejoice down in the valley. My last verse is Psalms 30, verse 5. For his anger, God's anger, endureth but for a moment. Some of us has felt that anger from the Lord. In his favor is life. Oh, God gave you life. God woke you up this morning again. How many thousands and thousands of times has he done that? He didn't do that for everybody, by the way. So you are special. God gave you breath. He woke you up this morning. Anger endures but a moment in his favor's life. Weeping may endure for a night. Yeah. Hey, but joy comes in the morning. Yeah, amen. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Oh, it might be midnight. It might be dark. Oh, it might be lonely. It might be scary, and you might be full of fear, and you're confused, and you don't know how things are going to work out. It is dark in your life. Oh, hold on, child of God. Oh, oh it's just going to last the night because joy comes in the morning. Amen. Oh, the sun is going to rise. Amen. The light of the world is going to shine in your situations. you got to believe that. Give the Lord praise. Give him praise.